In 2019, Google released two sets of phones, the Pixel 4 and the Pixel 3a. The 3a is the budget model coming in at about $400, and the Pixel 4 is the flagship phone coming in at over $800. Thanks to Google's light yet powerful software, the 3A performs exceptionally well for its price. So is the Pixel 4 a true upgrade? With advanced technology such as radar gesture control, real-time transcriptions, and astrophotography, the 4 sounds promising on paper. But how does it compare in real life? I used both of these phones side by side for an entire week to figure this out. In this video, I dive into the similarities and differences between these phones to help you decide which one is best. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike O'Brien, and like I said, this video is all about the Google Pixel 3a and the Pixel 4. Now, like I said, normally I don't compare a flagship phone to a budget phone, but in the case of the Pixel, I think we need to make an exception. So I think Pixel phones are not really about the flashiest, newest features, and by that I mean hardware features. So they're not gonna have like the three cameras, the heart rate sensor, the underscreen fingerprint sensors. Instead, I think the purpose of a Pixel is really to make your life easier easier with fewer button presses, with fewer tasks, and all you have to do, like for example, you just pick up your phone, if you have a question, you wanna search something, you pick it up, you look at it, you squeeze it on the four, and you just ask whatever you want. So you can set up appointments, you can set up calendar events, ask, you know, whatever you wanna search on the internet, you can send messages and phone calls, and it's literally an assistant in your pocket. And I know most other phones, like, you know, Apple has Siri, Android phones all have Google Assistant on them, Samsung has Bixby if you use that. So there are different versions out there, but I think the Pixel really is a special phone that really focuses primarily on that, just to make your life as quick and efficient as possible. So looking at these two phones side by side, the first major difference that everyone has to really notice is the price. Now, the Pixel 4, of course, prices vary for all of these, but it's somewhere around $800. And the Pixel 3a is somewhere around $350. Now, I'll drop links down below if you guys wanna see the exact price right now. They change all the time, but you're talking about approximately double the price. Looking at the back of these phones, there are three different colors for each of them. I'll pop them up on the screen right here, but if you want like a purplish color, I think is what they call it, then the 3a is a better phone for you, uh, or you could just get a, a skin or a case for it that's the same color that, you know, if you want purplish, or the Oso orange is the one that is unique to the four. Now. They're both cool colors, but you can also get black and white for either of those, or like I said, get a skin or get a case. Now, the back of the four, at least on the white one and on the orange one, is a matte back and matte all the way around the outside of it, um, except for obviously the camera block is just glossy. I'm not gonna drop this phone ever. I feel really comfortable with this phone. I think it also looks really good. It's not too shiny. Now on the flip side, on the 3A, I believe this is a polycarbonate back, um, and it's still moderately, you know, it's not too bad to hold. It's kind of a matte color on the bottom and glossy on the top, um, but it's not gonna be the same texture that you have on the four. Now you'll also notice looking at the back that the four has the camera block, which is classic of 2019 flagship phones, but this one doesn't have three cameras, it only has two. The third one up there is just a sensor. So you have two cameras here. One is a just regular wide angle and the other one is a telephoto lens. I'll talk more about those later on. But the 3a, you just have a single camera, which is the same camera that they have on the Pixel 3. So it's a great camera. It was one of the best cameras in the past couple years. And so the Pixel notoriously has a great camera. They packed it into a budget phone. If you're looking for a camera, this is a really good one to get. Now you'll see right in the middle of the back, you have a fingerprint sensor on the 3a. You don't have that on the 4. So if you're somebody that really likes having a fingerprint sensor, the 3a might be a better phone for you. But on the flip side, the 4 does have a radar chip on the top. So it is supposed to be a very, very fast face ID. So as soon as you're reaching for your phone, it fires up the cameras, you pick up your phone, and it signs in instantly. So it's really, really fast. Um, and I found that very impressive, especially in brighter settings, like in the studio right now, it's absolutely instant. Sometimes in the dark, it's slightly slower, um, but it's still absolutely no problem to sign in. A quick aside, if you're new here and haven't yet subscribed, but you're interested in the latest tech like these two phones right here, make sure you go down and click the subscribe button and the bell icon, otherwise YouTube won't tell you when I put out new videos. So I will be reviewing some other Google hardware such as the Pixel Buds and the Nest Mini as well as several other things they just released. If you don't wanna miss those, make sure you click the subscribe button and the bell icon. Both of these do have the little squeezy sides, so if you're somebody that likes the classic Pixel, you know, pick it up and squeeze it and ask, you know, the Google Assistant something, you can do that with both of these phones. 
that's really nice. So a really big plus for a lot of people, maybe not everyone, but I know it is for me, uh, they have a headphone jack on the 3A right here. So you'll see you can plug in any kind of headphones you want here. The 4, you have to get either a little dongle for that or you have to go out and buy Bluetooth headphones. Now to test out the voice assistant and speed of Look both of these Casey phones. Look up Casey Neistat on YouTube. The Pixel 4 is clearly the faster of these two phones when it comes to opening apps. What's the weather in San Diego, California? Although the 3A, strangely enough, is faster when opening the weather. How long would it take me to drive from Bangor, Maine to San Diego, California? With light traffic, it will take you two days to drive from Bangor to San Diego. Create a reminder for me to buy Captain Crunch and buy some Cheerios and buy some frosted mini wheats and buy some bread and some eggs and some yogurt and some milk. And I definitely need to remember to buy Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Sure. Set a timer for 10 minutes. This is not a perfect test by any means, but should indicate the relative speeds of these two phones. Open my camera. You'll also notice kind of a subtle difference here, and I don't know if it's good or bad, but the screen on the 4 is a little bit more rounded in the corners. So they really chopped off a lot of the corners there. If you're watching videos that really, you know, occupy the corners, it might be a little bit strange. I got used to it and it doesn't bother me now. Now, speaking of the screen though, the 4 also has a 90 hertz refresh rate, which is very exciting. So it's a much more smooth interface. Every now and then it drops back down to 60 hertz though, if you have it set with automatic like power saving kind of mode. Um, but if you can, you can override that and have it always 90 hertz. But the problem then is the next major difference between these phones, and that is the battery. So the 3A has a 3000 milliamp hour battery. The 4 has a 2800 milliamp hour battery. But because the 4 has a 90 hertz refresh rate screen and a couple other things in there that use a lot of power, the battery doesn't last nearly as long on the 4 as you would get on the 3A. So, so Google is really excited about the radar chip that they put on the Pixel 4 right here. And like I said, you can reach for your phone and it turns on the camera much quicker, so it signs in very fast. You can also use it to, uh, for example, if you have an alarm going off or a phone call, as you reach for your phone, it turns the volume down uh, and just makes it a little more subtle. You can then swipe it away if you don't want to uh, you know, if you just want to dismiss the alarm. But I think the biggest upgrade between these two phones, and I think the most obvious one for a lot of people, would be the processor, and of course the RAM on board. So going from a 600 series Snapdragon to an 855 is a pretty big leap up. So the 4 is gonna be significantly faster under daily use than the 3A. Then you also have, actually you have the same amount of storage on both of these. They both, the lowest model is 64 gigs on the 4, and then the 3A is, actually only comes in 64 gigs. So that's enough for a lot of people. If you're shooting 4K videos, which both of these can do, then you won't be able to shoot that much 4K video. You might fill it up soon, but 64 gigs is not that bad. I know some people complain, but I'm not going to. So now the photo quality of both of these phones. The first thing you can notice is the white balance is improved on the Pixel 4. It is also higher quality when you zoom in and you can go up to 8X and you have super res zoom. And then of course we go into the famous night mode. The night mode is also improved on the Pixel 4 because it now has astrophotography as well as standard night mode. And you can actually take star pictures and it'll take about four minutes to take the picture. So another difference that I think kind of correlates with the price here would be the waterproofing. So the 4 is IP68 waterproof and the 3 is not, which means that if you drop the 4 in water that's like a couple feet deep, it could be there for up to like 30 minutes or so, and then your phone's gonna be fine. Now, the 3, if you drop it in, I don't know how long it would last before it breaks. I'm not gonna test that out either. Now, you could argue that, you know, how often do you actually drop it in the water? I don't think I've ever dropped a phone in the water, and even if you did drop it, it'd be cheaper to buy two Pixel 3As than one Pixel 4, so, like I said, it correlates with the price. It makes sense that this one has to be waterproof. So the screen sizes and resolutions on both of these are very similar. The four is 0.1 inches larger, so not a huge difference there. And there's also a smaller bezel on the bottom, which can, you know, it's a small plus right there. So between these two phones, which one is actually better? So they both have some very impressive features. They can both do the fundamentals of what a Pixel is meant to do, including make your life easier with the Google Assistant. Now, if you want a fingerprint sensor and a headphone jack, it makes sense that the Pixel 3a is the one for you. It's also significantly cheaper. So if you're on a budget, another great option here. 
But if you're looking for the more premium phone, which in my opinion looks better, uh, it also is faster, significantly faster, has you know better cameras, the astrophotography, the second telephoto lens right there, and several other features baked into this one, the Pixel 4 is the one for you. Now, regardless of which one you chose, I made a video on each of those. So the Pixel 3 video, I'll pop it up right here. And then the Pixel 4 video, I will pop it up right here. So check out one of those, whichever one you like better. Comment down below before you go to that video. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.